In geometry, flexagons are flat models, usually constructed by folding strips of paper, that can be flexed or folded in certain ways to reveal faces besides the two that were originally on the back and front. Flexagons are usually square or rectangular or hexagonal. A prefix can be added to the name to indicate the number of faces that the model can display, including the two faces that are visible before flexing. For example, a hexaflexagon with a total of six faces is called a hexahexaflexagon. In hexaflexagon theory, flexagons are usually defined in terms of pats. Two flexagons are equivalent if one can be transformed to the other by a series of pinches and rotations. Flexagon equivalence is an equivalence relation. History Discovery and introduction The discovery of the first flexagon, a trihexaflexagon, is credited to the British student Arthur H. Stone, who was studying at Princeton University in the United States in 1939. His new American paper would not fit in his English binder so he cut off the ends of the paper and began folding them into different shapes. One of these formed a trihexaflexagon. Stone's colleagues Bryant Tuckerman, Richard Feynman, and John Tukey became interested in the idea and formed the Princeton Flexagon Committee. Tuckerman worked out a topological method, called the Tuckerman Traverse, for revealing all the faces of a flexagon. Flexagons were introduced to the general public by the recreational mathematician Martin Gardner in 1956 in the first mathematical games column which he wrote for Scientific American magazine. In 1974, the magician Doug Henning included a Construct Your Own Hexaflexagon with the original cast recording of his Broadway show The Magic Show. Attempted commercial development in 1955, Russell Rogers and Leonard D'Andrea of Homestead Park, Pennsylvania applied for a patent and in 1959 they were granted U.S. Patent number 2,883,195 for the hexahexaflexagon, under the title, Changeable Amusement Devices and the like. Their patent imagined possible applications of the device, as a toy, as an advertising display device, or as an educational geometric device. A few such novelties were produced by the Herbick and Held Printing Company the printing company in Pittsburgh where Rogers worked, but the device, marketed as the Hexmo, failed to catch on. Varieties Tetraflexagons The tri-tetraflexagon is the simplest tetraflexagon. The tri in the name means it has three faces, two of which are visible at any given time if the flexagon is pressed flat. The construction of the tri-tetraflexagon is similar to the mechanism used in the traditional Jacob's Ladder children's toy, in Rubik's Magic and in the Magic Wallet trick or the Himba Wallet. A more complicated cyclic hexatetraflexagon requires no gluing. A cyclic hexatetraflexagon does not have any dead ends, but the person making it can keep folding it until they reach the starting position. If the sides are colored in the process, the states can be seen more clearly. Hexaflexagons Hexaflexagons come in great variety, distinguished by the number of faces that can be achieved by flexing the assembled figure can sometimes refer to an ordinary hexahexaflexagon, with six sides instead of other numbers, tri-hexaflexagon a hexaflexagon with three faces. This is the simplest of the hexaflexagons to make and to manage, and is made from a single strip of paper, divided into ten equilateral triangles. Hexahexaflexagon This hexaflexagon has six faces. It is made up of 19 triangles folded from a strip of paper. Photos 1 to 6 below show the construction of a hexaflexagon made out of cardboard triangles on a backing made from a strip of cloth. It has been decorated in six colors, orange, blue, and red in figure 1 correspond to 1, 2, and 3 in the diagram above. The opposite side, figure 2, is decorated with purple, gray, and yellow. Note the different patterns used for the colors on the two sides. 
Figure 3 shows the first fold, and Figure 4 the result of the first nine folds, which form a spiral. Figures 5 to 6 show the final folding of the spiral to make a hexagon. In 5, two red faces have been hidden by a valley fold, and in 6, two red faces on the bottom side have been hidden by a mountain fold. After figure 6, the final loose triangle is folded over and attached to the other end of the original strip so that one side is all blue, and the other all orange. Photos 7 and 8 show the process of everting the hexaflexagon to show the formerly hidden red triangles. By further manipulations, all six colors can be exposed. Faces 1, 2, and 3 are easier to find while faces 4, 5, and 6 are more difficult to find. An easy way to expose all six faces is using the Tuckerman Traverse. It's named after Bryant Tuckerman, one of the first to investigate the properties of hexaflexagons. The Tuckerman Traverse involves the repeated flexing by pinching one corner and flex from exactly the same corner every time. If the corner refuses to open, move to an adjacent corner and keep flexing. This procedure brings you to a 12-phase cycle. During this procedure, however, 1, 2, and 3 show up 3 times as frequently as 4, 5, and 6. The cycle proceeds as follows. 1, 3, 6, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 2 and then back to 1 again. Each color, face can also be exposed in more than one way. In figure 6, for example, each blue triangle has at the center its corner decorated with a wedge, but it is also possible, for example, to make the ones decorated with Ys come to the center. There are 18 such possible configurations for triangles with different colors, and they can be seen by flexing the hexahexaflexagon in all possible ways in theory, but only 15 can be flexed by the ordinary hexahexaflexagon. The three extra configurations are impossible due to the arrangement of the 4, 5, and 6 tiles at the back flap. Hexahexaflexagons can be constructed from different shaped nets of 18 equilateral triangles. One hexahexaflexagon, constructed from an irregular paper strip, is almost identical to the one shown above, except that all 18 configurations can be flexed on this version. Other hexaflexagons while the most commonly seen hexaflexagons have either 3 or 6 faces, variations exist with 4, 5, 7, and 12 faces. Higher order flexagons right octaflexagon and right dodecaflexagon in these more recently discovered flexagons. Each square or equilateral triangular face of a conventional flexagon is further divided into two right triangles, permitting additional flexing modes. The division of the square faces of tetraflexagons into right isosceles triangles yields the octaflexagons and the division of the triangular faces of the hexaflexagons into 3O, 6O, 9O right triangles yields the dodecaflexagons, pentaflexagon and right decaflexagon in its flat state. The pentaflexagon looks much like the Chrysler logo, a regular pentagon divided from the center into five isosceles triangles, with angles 7, 2, 5, 4, 5, 4. Because of its five-fold symmetry, the pentaflexagon cannot be folded in half. However, a complex series of flexes results in its transformation from displaying size 1 and 2 on the front and back, to displaying its previously hidden sides 3 and 4. By further dividing the 7, 2, 5, 4, 5, 4 triangles of the pentaflexagon into 3, 6, 5, 4, 9, 0 right triangles produces one variation of the 10-sided decaflexagon. Generalized isosceles n flexagon The pentaflexagon is one of an infinite sequence of flexagons based on dividing a regular or n gon into n isosceles triangles. Other flexagons include the heptaflexagon, the isosceles octaflexagon, the eneaflexagon, and others. Non-planar pentaflexagon and non-planar heptaflexagon Harold V. McIntosh also describes non-planar flexagons, ones folded from pentagons called pentaflexagons, and from heptagons called heptaflexagons. 
These should be distinguished from the ordinary pentaflexagons and heptaflexagons described above, which are made out of isosceles triangles, and they can be made to lie flat. Bibliography. Mitchell, David. The Magic of Flexagons. Paper Curiosities to Cut Out and Make. Tarquin. ISBN 1-899618-287. Pook, Les. Serious Fun with Flexagons, a Compendium and Guide. Springer. ISBN 90481-2502-2. Pook, Les. Flexagons Inside Out, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0 521 9 Martin Gardner wrote an excellent introduction to hexaflexagons in the December 1956 Mathematical Games column in Scientific American. It also appears in the Scientific American Book of Mathematical Puzzles and Diversions, Hexaflexagons and Other Mathematical Diversions. The first Scientific American Book of Puzzles and Games The Colossal Book of Mathematics Hexaflexagons Probability Paradoxes and The Tower of Hanoi Martin Gardner's first book of mathematical puzzles and games College Mathematics Journal 43-1-5 The issue also contains another article by Pook and one by IACOB, McLean and Wah.